snails and tails, and we're going to be focusing on cryptids, hunting for cryptids this year. And don't forget to register for the program, and of course, each week complete the challenges that will enter you in to win some prizes. Hello, welcome to our summer reading video today. Our theme this year is Tales and Tales. And today we're going to be talking about the Loch Ness Monster. Now our theme is all about animals and stories, so we're focusing on cryptids this year. Now a cryptid is an animal that hasn't been proven to exist, so much like the Loch Ness Monster. Also known as Nessie. Okay, so let's get into the cryptozoology of, you know, what a cryptid is and what's the study of that mean. So the search for and study of animals whose existence or survival is disputed is, or unsubstantiated, that is cryptozoology. So cryptozoologists might, you know, go out, um, actually hunt for these creatures, um, you know, the science of that. Now, some cryptozoologists believe that Nessie is similar to sea serpents, um, like the Pleosaur. However, some um, describe the creatures being simil similar to the extinct species of carnivorous whale, the Basilosaurus. I've got some images here of what those look like. So, now, the Basilosaurus first here is the prehistoric whale that lived about 40 million years ago. Um, I don't really think that that looks like the interpretations we've seen. Um, on the other hand, the Pleosaur, the large marine reptile that lived during the Jurassic and Crustaceous periods, which is about 215 to 80 million years ago, I think that looks more in line with what we kind of think of when we think of the Loch Ness Monster. But just interesting thoughts there. So what is the Loch Ness Monster exactly? So it's an animal that allegedly lives in Loch Ness, which is a large freshwater lake near Inverness, Scotland. Now it's described as large, long neck, and with one or more humps protruding from the water. Now although accounts of aquatic beasts living in the lake date back 1500 years, all efforts to find any credible evidence of the animal have failed, making it called, you know, a cryptid. That's what we're talking about. So we got an image here of just kind of like a, you know, fantasized Loch Ness Monster coming out of the lock. All right, so what does Loch Ness Monster look like exactly? So often it's said to be, you know, of course large, usually around 20 feet long, sometimes larger, um, sleek, rubbery, blackish, gray skin, but of course, um, reports on the color do change. Sometimes you'll hear green or, you know, maybe even like a light blue. Um, it's supposed to be dragon or snake-like with humps along its back and often said to have a horse-shaped head or a small turtle-like head. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Loch Ness, Scotland, so that area where Nessie is actually supposed to be from. So Loch Ness is one of Scotland's largest and most famous lochs, known around the world thanks to the elusive monster Nessie, of course. It's um, 23 miles long and over 700 feet at its deepest, making it Scotland's largest loch in terms of volume. So we've got a picture here, pretty little like, castle looking over the lock. Alright, so just to get into just a teeny bit of history. Now scholars of Loch Ness Monster have found dozens of references to Nessie in Scottish history dating back to around 500 AD when local Picts or ancient people that lived um, in what is now eastern and northeastern Scotland. They carved strange aquatic creature into the standing stones near Loch Ness. All right, so the earliest written reference to a monster in Loch Ness can be found in the 7th century biography of St. Columba. He was an Irish missionary who introduced Christianity to Scotland. Now, in 565 AD, according to the biographer of that um, biography of St. Columba, um, he was on his way to visit the king of northern Picts near Inverness when he stopped at Loch Ness to confront a beast that supposedly had been killing people in the lake at that time. So apparently, St. Columbus saw a large beast about to attack another man, so he intervened, um, invoking the name of God and commanding the creature to go back all speed. And of course, this supposedly caused the monster to retreat, 
There's no evidence of this, but this is, you know, the story. So let's get into some sightings. Now the first one was in 1933 that we're going to talk about. Um, there was a new road that was completed along Loch Ness Shore, which afforded drivers a clear view of the loch. So on May 2nd of that year, the Inverness Courier reported that a local couple claimed to have seen an enormous animal rolling and plunging on the surface of the water in the loch. Now the story of Loch Ness Monster then became a phenomenon because of this in part. So with London newspapers sending correspondents to Scotland and even a circus offered a 20,000 pound reward for the capture of the beast. So it's quite a lot of money back then for reference that's about, you know, 28,000 USD in 1933. That's a lot. So for more sightings, let's see, um, the interest in Loch Ness grew after another couple claimed to have spotted the monster on land this time versus in the water. Now several British newspapers sent reporters to Scotland including London's Daily Mail and they ha actually hired a big game hunter named Marmaduke Wetherell to capture the beast. Now, after a few days of searching the loch um, he had reported that he found some footprints of a four-legged animal. In response the Daily Mail uh, carried the dramatic headline Monster of Loch Ness is not legend but fact. So pretty they didn't really have uh, evidence other than him just saying he found some footprints and they just went with that. <laughs> Alright, so now the footprints that he found supposedly um, belonged to a powerful soft-footed animal, he said, about 20 feet or 6 meters in length. Now, forever upon closer inspection, zoologists at the Natural History Museum determined that the tracks were identical and made with an umbrella stand or ashtray that had a hippopotamus leg as a base. Um, whether his role in the hoax was unclear at that time, they weren't really sure, you know, if this was something he planned, um, if he had help, they didn't really know. So really the news of this only seemed to spur efforts to prove the monster's existence. People were very excited, you know, going down to the lock trying to find it. And then in 1934, an English physician, Robert Kenneth Wilson, photographed the alleged creature. So this is a very iconic image I'm going to show next. It's called the Surgeon's Photograph. It appeared to show the monster's small head and neck. Now the Daily Mail printed the photograph, sparking an international sensation. Many speculated that the creature was a pleosaur, which is a marine rep reptile that of course went extinct 65 million years ago, roughly, we talked about earlier. Here's the infamous photograph. People were, um, pretty much believing it, um, especially because it was from a doctor, so he had, you know, a lot of credibility in the community. Now, the surgeon's photograph um, was proven about 60 years later after it graced the Daily Mail pages in 1994 to be a hoax. Christopher Sperling verified the photograph as a hoax by admitting his involvement in its production. Sperling, the stepson of, he was the stepson of Marmaduke Wetherell, the man, the, the game hunter, that had been hired by the Daily Mail in 1993, or 1933, sorry. Now, after Sperling revealed the photograph was a hoax, he explained that Wetherell had enlisted his help to create a model of the monster's neck and place it on a toy submarine. Robert Kenneth Wilson was chosen to give the photograph to the media because of his trusted reputation as a doctor. a little bit um, more recent here. 2016, an amateur photographer named Ian Bremer was driving around the highlands in search of some red deer. Instead, he stumbled across a remarkable sight of what he believed to be Nessie swimming in the calm waters of the loch. Now, some believe this photo is just two seals playing in the water, but this isn't confirmed. It could be Nessie. If it is actually Nessie, it would be the clearest photo ever taken of the creature. Um, Ian Bremer himself really believes this photo I'm going to show next is of the Loch Ness Monster. Um, I will, personally, I think that it's two seals. I can kind of see um, the seal's head pretty clearly there, so I'm, I'm pretty convinced it's seals, but maybe not. Still a cool sight there. So let's get into just a little bit of the science and exploration. So Loch Ness area has attracted numerous monster hunters over the years. Several sonar explorations, notably in 87 and 2003, were undertaken to locate the creature, but none were successful. 
but they're still looking, of course. Now, in 2018, researchers conducted a DNA survey of the Loch Ness to determine um, the organisms that lived in the water. Now, there was no signs of pleos or other large animal were found, though the results did indicate a numerous amount of eel DNA. Um, so this left open the possibility that the monster could just be an oversized eel. Now, despite the lack of conclusive evidence, Loch Ness Monster remains popular and, of course, profitable. Now, in the early 20th century, it thought that it contributed roughly 80 million annually to Scotland's economy. So it's, it's still a big deal. I mean, they're still looking, the scientists and, of course, just, you know, everyday folks keep looking and it's still a really large attraction which is what we're going to get into a little bit next. So the pop culture. The pop culture has definitely not died out. It's one of Scotland's oldest and most enduring myths. So it inspires books, TV shows, films, and much more. Um, and it sustains a major tourism industry around Loch Ness. So the first one I'm going to just talk about briefly, just a couple here. So Nessie was um, in the 1969 film The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes. Kind of a little fun fact here is that the prop that they made there kind of looks more you know like a dragon nessie they weren't super happy with the way the humps looked so the director wanted them to change the humps and they did but it messed with the buoyancy so that prop actually ended up sinking in 1969 and um recently scientists doing some exploration under you know the water they found it so that was pretty cool. So they found Nessie, just not, not the alive Nessie. <laughs> All right, so next, now in season 10 of The Simpsons, Nessie was actually in. So Mon Montgomery Burns had drained Loch Ness of water and then he spirited to Springfield via helicopter and revealed Nessie to the locals, of course. And Nessie proved to be a lovable, attention-loving beast and ultimately took a job at a casino because, hey, it's The Simpsons, so of course he's gonna work in a casino. Excellent. Um, and then 1999, that same year, um, Nessie was in South Park. So big year for Nessie. Now a few other movies Nessie has been kind of in uh, here. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The 1996 film Loch Ness. There's another film Nessie and Me as well as countless others. Um, there's even a roller coaster in um, Williamsburg, Virginia called the Loch Ness Monster. The Washington Post described this double looping coaster as a marvel of engineering. It has served more than 58 million riders and become a landmark of the area. So just kind of getting into, you know, it's not just in movies and TV and books. It's also, you know, things like roller coasters and, you know, stuffed animals. It's very popular. <laughs> okay, so just a couple books I'm going to mention. Um, the Loch Ness Monster by Aaron Peabody, Nessie, The Loch Ness Monster by Richard Brassey, and The Bogart and the Monster by Susan Cooper. There are many, many, many books. If you're interested in um, both fiction and nonfiction, you can find so, so many wonderful books that either, you know, discuss Nessie or have Nessie in it. So I definitely recommend looking those up as well as others. Now, so Nessie is an enduring figure in our history and our culture. The lack of proof has done nothing to quell our curiosity of this creature. People continue to search for Nessie, and I believe they will continue as time goes. Um, and this is, you know, part of what makes it a cryptid. We don't know if it exists, but we're going to you know, continue to search. So what do you think? Um, could there be a large serpent-like beast living in Loch Ness? Or are these sightings just misidentified fish or even objects? So you decide. Here's just some of my sources here that I use to make this video. And of course, just make sure you're registered for our program by visiting our website or giving us a call. Okay, so let's go over what's going to be in your grab bags this week. So there will be a Loch Ness greeting card and then a Loch Ness trivia page with some trivia facts. All right, so for as far as your incentives this week, what you need to do is register for this program if you haven't already, watch our tutorial video if you haven't already, um, check out 15 books, check out three movies, or five movies, sorry, five movies, 
and read 100 pages. And then of course, watching this video is also going to count toward that. Thanks for joining us today. Join us every week, June 7th through August 6th for another cryptid adventure. And of course, stop by the library to pick up your grab bag full of either craft supplies or some cool, fun extra prizes.